Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are previewing week three in college football. We're talking right now with Steve from collegefootballwinning.com, who, of course, uh, has done a lot of college football videos with us. He has a great record at his uh, site long term. And this year, giving us two picks, 2-0 two and oh against the spread, two easy covers, awesome picks. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. Thanks for being back with us. Thank you, Peter, and thank you for the very kind introduction. We're going to do uh, West Virginia and Maryland. That's the game that you chose uh, this week. Before we get to it, give a plug for uh, college footballwinning.com. Footballwinning.com. Terrific. I'd be happy to. At collegefootballwinning.com, all we do is college football betting analysis. Uh, we are a company that was founded on making betting recommendations algorithmically. We call those algorithmic betting recommendations our formula. And our formula was 66.18% against the spread last year, 2013 2014. Uh, lifetime, 63.04% against the spread with that formula. Now, the, we mentioned this last week, but uh, it bears repeating here that the formula does not begin in any season until we have enough current season performance data that's on field performance data. So it's usually after week four, week five. So long story short, anyone listening to this video right now, uh, week three has not missed a single formula pick this year. So come on out to collegefootballwinning.com, uh, join us. You can use coupon code SBR10, that's SBR10. You'll get 10% off of any membership that we're currently offering, and we still offer a 100% money-back guarantee on the entire season. All right, Steve, West Virginia and Maryland, and uh, an interesting game. You chose it. Maryland's a three-and-a-half point uh, home favorite. The total is 60 or 60-and-a-half, and that uh, really has exploded up from the opening line of 57. The side hasn't uh, moved that much, bounced around a little bit. Uh, for me, you know, I think I, have, I think I have a play here. We'll see if you agree with it. For me, the key factor here is uh, Maryland, you know, they're going to be wearing uh, – uniforms right with triumph on the back they're going to have like tanks and machine guns and the declaration of independence and the proclamation the emancipation proclamation all that stuff on their uniforms uh for this game and uh, and you know uh, i'll tell you what you know i support i support america i support our troops i support defense contractors i support dick cheney i support all of that but when it comes to betting when teams do stuff like that, I like to bet against them. Vanderbilt did the same thing in, in week one. They had like, you know, whatever. They had like, uh, we're going to kick your ass on the back of their jerseys or whatever. They were an eight and a half point favorite. They got blown out by Temple. Uh, so my first thought is, you know, they're wearing those uniforms. Definitely going to bet West Virginia. And then you look at the uh, at the recent um, ATS results. You know, Maryland was supposedly was a side that took a lot of action last week, one-way action. They lost against the spread. West Virginia, we know they covered against Alabama. And then the next week, they got a big cover against uh, Towson. So looking at that, just supports it even more. West Virginia plus 3.5 is the play here. Steve, do you agree? I agree. And, you know, the uniform-related reasons are, are definitely solid, Peter. And, and who can argue with that? But... Let's just pretend that you know, we can argue a little bit with that, and I'm, or I'm actually going to just build on that. So it's not even arguing with it. It's just building on that. Now, both teams uh, have played so far this season one FCS opponent and one FBS opponent. Okay, so we used to call Division One AA and Division One A. Maryland's FBS opponent was South Florida last week. You mentioned that. Well, uh, West Virginia's in week one was Alabama. Okay, Maryland's FBS margin of victory against the spread, or you can call it the margin of cover, was minus three and a half against South Florida. And West Virginia's FBS margin of victory against the spread, or you can call that still margin of cover, was plus 12 against Alabama. So right now we're seeing, you know, West Virginia is looking like they're underrated. Maryland, perhaps a bit overrated, but let's look into this. So seeing that West Virginia is getting three and a half points here, at Maryland, part of this, I believe, is because of last year's score. So Maryland, 2013, just destroyed West Virginia. It was 37 to nothing. Okay, that was last year. Now, you and I, Peter, have talked about outlier performances before. Now, this 2013 game, or last year's 2013 game, West Virginia, Maryland, is definitely that. It was an outlier performance. First of all, starting off, it they claim that it was at a neutral site, okay? That so-called neutral site was 30, 30 miles away from Maryland's campus. The game was being played in Baltimore. That's more than 200 miles away from Morgantown. So anyone who says, well, look what Maryland did on a neutral site, hardly a neutral site, 
That really was a Maryland home game. That's first of all. Second of all, it was in the pouring rain. Okay, horrible weather. Third of all, there were six West Virginia turnovers. That's the most that Dana Holgerson, any one of his teams, has ever had at West Virginia. Okay, truly an outlying statistic. They were, and this cannot be overlooked, they were, or it can't be emphasized enough, Peter, West Virginia played with a third-string quarterback in that game. as a freshman. That guy truly, truly failed to execute Dana Holgerson's offense. Now, this year, what's the difference? West, the difference is night and day. West Virginia's quarterback, Clint Trickett, is running Dana Holgerson's offense to near perfection right now. Guy's completing over 75% of his passes. He has three touchdowns, but very importantly, no interceptions. And by the way, versus Alabama, West Virginia receivers dropped, I think it was eight passes. Without those drops, Clint Trickett would have completed 82.22% of his passes versus Alabama. Okay, now the other side, Maryland's quarterback, C.J. Brown, this guy, in terms of his career at Maryland, he's completed just 55.09% of his passes, 23 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, hardly impressive. And if you think, well, you're judging him on, on what he's done in the past too much, well, this year, so far through two games and two relatively easy opponents, he's just 53.85% uh, complete a uh, completion rate with a three to two touchdown passes to interceptions ratio. Not impressive. Looking at things a little more quantitatively, uh, this matchup power ratings entering this game in 2013 compared to how they're entering this game, 2014 West Virginia, the difference between West Virginia playing Maryland last year and this year is just 1.55 points. So it's hardly anything from last year to this year. We think West Virginia is just miles ahead of where they were last year, much better than 1.55 points. Now, last year's Mountaineers entering this game, they also had played, uh, or I'm sorry, after two games last season, after playing their first two games, just, just like now, they had played an FCS opponent and a highly ranked FBS opponent in Oklahoma last season at this time, week three. They were outscored 31 to 33. This season... Same sort of setup, an FCS opponent and a highly ranked FBS opponent in Alabama. They've outscored their opponents 77 to 33. And by the way, Alabama's defense has allowed 5.7 yards per play. That's just what West Virginia got on them, 5.7 yards per play. That was their average. They've allowed that. That was just the 10th time that Alabama has allowed that in seven seasons. It's a span of 83 games. And that's including all those drops that I already talked about for the West Virginia receivers. So it would have been much worse had those guys held onto the ball. Now, although Randy Edsel, over the span of his head coaching career, he is one of the best against the spread head coaches. But at Maryland so far, he's just 42.11% against the spread in an even worse 35% against the spread in Maryland home games. Now, Edsel is just one in five against the spread in Maryland home games when Maryland is favored by a touchdown or less, like they are in this spot. Now, at the same time, Dana Holgerson is 52.63% against the spread in all away games at West Virginia. Doesn't sound that impressive, but it's definitely, it's narrowly profitable. But the important thing to note is that includes last season. And last season, in terms of against the spread, that was West Virginia's worst against the spread season they've had since we've been tracking betting data. And we have 12 years going on our 12th season of tracking betting data so long story already uh, pretty long but uh, here's the conclusion peter we don't love being on the popular majority side and west virginia is getting more than 70 percent of the public betting as we're recording this video but even despite that we'll take west virginia plus the three and a half points in this matchup all right, Steve, I know you analyze everything with, with a ton of stats and quantitatively, but the other, you know, factors do matter. And I'm telling you, it's just the way the world works. If you're a favorite and for one game you have triumph written on the back of your jersey, you're losing that game every time. It's just how the world works. We're in agreement, though. Lockstep agreement. Steve and I both like in West Virginia, plus three and a half here. Thanks so much, Steve. The SBR Network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns. Big money free betting contests year round, a real time Vegas style odds monitoring service, and much more. So come see for yourself. 
To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Google+. And do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.